Hello quiet ones, welcome back. I missed you too. Plus I hope you're having a good day. And I also hope you enjoy today's video. And this story is called The House of Disappearances. There was this woman whose husband was acting very strange one day, very paranoid. She asked him why, and this is what he told her. Twelve years ago, to this day, a whole bunch of my friends and I went to an old haunted house downtown to stay the night because we thought it would be fun. We were all settled on the bottom floor of the house, and we were fine for the first few hours. We began to hear things that sounded like footsteps pacing on the floor above and scratching on the walls. We sent Jimmy, who was the oldest of us, up to have a look, so he grabbed his flashlight and we watched him head up the steps. His footsteps seemed to stop towards the last few steps, where he was no longer visible to us, and slowly his light faded from view. We called after him, but there was no reply. Jimmy! Afterwards, we sent Matt, the second oldest, up to find him. He walked up the steps, the same thing happened. At this point we thought they were joking, and our third eldest, Jason, went up to look, shouting that he knew it was a trick and to give it up. At the last few steps, where the other guys had vanished, his shouting voice became distant before vanishing completely. The rest of us got scared and went home to call the police, who checked it out the next morning and found blood smeared up the sides of the stairwell. They searched the entire house and never found a soul. The house was eventually knocked down and not one body was found. Every year on this day, one of us remaining from that house has disappeared, going from oldest to youngest. Her husband was not seen again after that day. Police held a brief investigation, but nothing came of it. And the second story is called White Wolf. She snapped awake out of a deep sleep, screaming aloud in terror. In her nightmare, a large white wolf had been chasing her around and around the house, gaining on her with every step until it finally pounced on her and ripped out her throat. She lay shaking for hours, unable to sleep after such a terrifying dream. But morning finally arrived and the day was completely normal. Celia forgot all about her dream until the moment her parents reminded her that they would be going out that night to celebrate their anniversary. Celia turned milk white. In her dream, the white wolf had come to kill her while her parents were out celebrating their anniversary. She started shaking and begging them not to go. Her parents were astonished at her behavior and finally shamed her into staying home alone that night. Fearfully, Celia locked herself into the house as soon as her parents left, checking every door and every window. She tried to laugh it off as she got into bed and finally she shook off her irrational fear and fell asleep. Celia snapped awake suddenly, every muscle tense. She heard the tingling of falling glass from a broken window and the snuffling sound of a snout pressed to the floor. It was the sound of a hundred
and Teen Wolf. And Werewolf. Real wolves do not break into houses when there was plenty of game outside. She could hear the clicking, clacking of the creature's claws on the wooden floor. The musky, foul smell of wet animal fur combined with the meaty breath of a carnivore drifted into the room. She could hear the werewolves panting right outside her room. Then her body was out of bed and she sped through the bathroom and down the back stairs she heard a soft growl and then the sound of animal feet pursuing her as she raced down the steps and tore open the back door a glance at the window beside her showed a reflection of the werewolf leaping down the last few steps behind her Celia's feet screamed in protest as she ran painfully across the sharp gravel driveway toward the tool shed with its shovels and baseball bats anything she could use as a weapon but the huge red-eyed wolf was suddenly between her and the tool shed stalking towards her the cold wind pierced her skin as she turned and fled around the side of the house she gasped <gasps> the white wolf howled and took off after her. She could hear the terrifying sound of the creature's pounding feet. Faster and faster she commanded her legs, panting desperately against the fear choking her. She would run around the house and back down the driveway. She thought with the clarity of sheer horror, she felt the wolf snap at her back leg and felt the sting of teeth she put on speed. The wolf veered away from her suddenly, and she felt a rush of hope. She couldn't hear the wolf now, couldn't see it in the cloud, darkened night. She kept running around the house, heading back toward the tool shed. To her intense relief, she heard the sound of a car coming down the road. In front of her house, her parents were back and would save her from the wolf. Then her heart stopped in a panic as she turned the last corner and saw the shape of the white wolf as it stood balanced on the porch railing right in front of her. It sprang upon Celia, huge teeth tearing into her flesh and ripping out her throat. She fell under the weight of its body, hot blood spilling all over the ground and died seconds after she hit the ground. One minute later, her parents' car pulled into the driveway, its headlights blinding the white wolf as it pulled towards the house. Frightened, the wolf backed away from its kill and then ran away. If you found today's video or live stream entertaining, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe button as well if you'd like to see more content just like this until my next live stream or video thank you for watching and as always take care quiet ones from yours truly the quiet adams